Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going through the whole of Edexcel GCSE Physics radioactivity. If you'd like to follow along with this video, over on my website you can download my notes and flashcards. Okay, so here are the three main models of the atom, and you should be pretty familiar with these from chemistry, but in physics we need to go a step further. We need to know about the experiment that took place between these two models of the atom, and this is when the nucleus was discovered. And the experiment done was called the foil experiment. So the idea was that alpha particles, which are these over here, were fired at a thin sheet of gold foil. Now, you don't need to know what alpha particles are yet. We'll look at that in a minute. You just need to know that they exist and that they were fired at thin sheets of gold foil. Now, most of the alpha particles passed right through the foil to the other side. But some of them hit the gold foil and rebounded back. And this happened a lot more than was expected. Let's use this model of the atom to explain it. Atoms are a positive sphere with negative electrons inside of it, so the whole atom is neutral. This should have just passed straight through with no problems happening, because the whole thing is neutral. Now let's try and use this model of the atom to explain it. Atoms have a positive nucleus. So here is the positive nucleus of the gold foil atoms. Now, as the positive alpha particles are fired at the positive nucleus, the alpha particle is repelled back. And this is because we know that the same charges repel each other. This is how we knew that atoms must have a positive nucleus. So now we're going to look at the three types of radiation. We have alpha radiation, beta, and gamma. So the symbol for alpha is a little a like that. The symbol for beta is a funny B, and the symbol for gamma is a funny shaped Y. Now, beta radiation can then be split into two types. We have beta plus and beta minus. Okay, so let's look at alpha radiation. So this is when unstable nuclei emit alpha particles, and alpha particles are made up of two protons and two neutrons. So this is essentially just the helium nucleus. So unstable atoms emit alpha particles. Now, alpha radiation is strongly ionizing. Now, we know that when something becomes an ion, it's either lost or gained electrons, so it can become a charged particle. Now, alpha particles are strongly ionizing because they're so big that they can knock electrons off as they're flown out of the nucleus. So now let's look at beta minus radiation. So, this is when an electron is released from the nucleus. Now, I'm hoping that you know that electrons don't exist in the nucleus. They're outside the atom in the shells. So what happens is a neutron decays into a proton, and then as it does that, it creates an electron, and then that is emitted from the atom. Now, beta plus is pretty similar. But this time, a proton is going to decay into a neutron, so it's the other way around. And as it does this, instead of creating an, ele an electron, it's going to release a positron, which is the antiparticle of an electron. So it's exactly the same size, it looks exactly the same, but instead of having a negative charge, it's positive. So this time the nucleus releases a positron. Now the last type of radiation is gamma. And gamma radiation doesn't actually release any physical particles. It's the energy released by a decaying nucleus. So gamma radiation is actually a wave on the electromagnetic spectrum, and this is very weakly ionizing. Where it's not releasing any particles, there's not really anything to knock any electrons off, so it just passes straight through the shells. So here are three materials. We have thin paper, a sheet of aluminium, and lead. So alpha particles can be stopped by paper or the skin. Beta radiation can then pass straight through the paper but can be stopped by aluminium. And then gamma radiation can pass through paper and aluminium, but can only be stopped by a thick sheet of lead. So we have our weakly penetrating alpha particle and our strongly penetrating gamma wave. Okay, so we can write nuclear equations to show what has happened. To do this, we write what the atom looked like before, and then we draw our arrow, and then the atom after, and the radiation that was emitted. So again, let's look at alpha radiation first. So just a quick reminder, an alpha particle is made up of two protons and two neutrons. 
so it'd have a mass of four, and this is because protons have a mass of one each and neutrons have a mass of one each, so they add together to make four, and an atomic number of two. So let's take an uranium atom. So we write the mass number of the atom up here, which is 238, and then the atomic number below here, which is 92. So we have the mass and atomic number. We then draw our arrow and we write the atom after. So if two protons and two neutrons are being lost, the mass is going to go down by four. So instead of being 238, now it's 234. And then the atomic number is also going to go down by two because we lost two protons, so it's 90. Now, again, I'm hoping that you remember from chemistry that if the atomic number changes, so does the element. So it's no longer uranium. We can now look on the periodic table and see that the element with an atomic number of 90 is TH. So the element has changed. And then finally, we write the radiation that was emitted. So we had an alpha particle, and the mass was 4, and the atomic number is 2. So there is a nuclear equation for alpha radiation. So now let's look at beta. The exact same thing happens, but the mass number doesn't change. So if we remember beta radiation again, we know that a neutron is lost, but it decays into a proton, and they both have an atomic number of 1, so technically we're not losing any mass. So the mass number stays the same, but the atomic number is going to change. So for beta minus decay, the atomic number is going to increase. And this is because a neutron has decayed into a proton. So we've gained one atomic number. So the atomic number goes up. And then for beta plus, the atomic number decreases. As we lose a proton, so the atomic number goes down. OK, so radiation is happening around us at all times. And this is called background radiation. So this is the low level radiation that's happening around at all times. So to measure radiation, we can use a special tube. And this is going to click every time it detects radiation. So we can point this at the source and then measure how many times it clicks to detect how much radiation there is. Now there are several different sources of background radiation. It can range from radon gas, which is released by special rocks everywhere, from medical processes like x-rays, internal so our food different processes inside our body and in loads of different ways it's all around us at all times now another really important thing you need to know about radiation is that it is completely random we can't predict when a nucleus is going to decay and emit radiation we can guess the half-life of an element and this is the average time taken for half of the nuclei to decay so i'll show you an example if we start with 60 radioactive nuclei at the start, so we have the radioactive nuclei up here and then the time down here. Now the half-life is going to be the time it takes for the amount of radioactive nuclei to halve. So we want to go down to 30. So if we measure along here, it would be whatever time is down here. So this is one half-life. The same would happen again, we want to get from 30 down to 15. So over here, that would be another half-life. Now radiation can be quite useful for humans. We can use it for two main reasons. We can use it in medicine, so for x-rays. And this generates pictures of internal structures in the body so that we can treat them. And we can use it for sterilization. Now, if we have medical tools, we don't want to use machines to clean them because they could then still become contaminated. But if we put them inside the wrapper and then blast them with radiation, it kills any microorganisms. Although radiation can also be a problem, it can cause mutations in human cells, which can often lead to cancer. So now we need to look at fission and fusion. So nuclear fission is when we split big nuclei up. A nuclear fusion is when we join small nuclei together. So here is a diagram of nuclear fission. So a neutron is fired at our big nuclei. And this is going to split it into two daughter nuclei. And these are going to be smaller than the nuclei we started with. 
So a neutron is fired at our big nuclei and it splits into two daughter nuclei. Now, as it does this, it releases two neutrons. And these neutrons then carry on to go and fire at a big nuclei and carry on splitting it up until the process keeps going as a chain reaction. And then here is a diagram of nuclear fission happening. So our two small nuclei collide together at really high speeds. And these fuse together to create a larger element. As it does this, it releases radiation. If this video helped with your physics revision, please subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos I have.